So this neat little plant uh, is actually called late flowering uh, bone set or late bone set. Sometimes it's called late thoroughwort. Uh, scientific name is Eupatorium uh, serotonum. Uh, and uh, it, it usually has uh, barely uh, pubescent stems. It's kind of hard to see the, the hairiness here. It's a great thing for, for pollinators. You might have seen before it's scared. Uh, well, actually, you can still see there's a, there's a little Ilanthus warbler moth. There's a nice little bumblebee taking a nap over here. There's a paper wasp that just flew off off the top. I mean, uh, there's another paper wasp over here. It is fantastic. Now, uh, this plant, uh, this, uh, again, uh, late thoroughbred. It is does bloom late. Uh, it is a in, in the Eupatorium family, which means is the whole family is supports something like 41 different species of caterpillars and stuff too. Uh, it is a boon for pollinators. Easily confused uh, with tall flowering bo uh, bone set, which is Altacemum, but um, but Ceratinum, the the late flowering one, um, one it has stalks, it has a stem, a petiole on the leaves itself that you can see right over on these. The other thing about it is it this tends to have be pubescent so it has a little bit more hair and stuff to it um, and so forth. Uh, this is a plant that I uh, usually prefers a, uh, a more moist environment whereas in the tall uh, thoroughwort uh, or tall bone set prefers more of a dry environment but otherwise they can overlap. They bloom almost at the same time. They are quite quite similar but again keep that in mind. One has a you know it's a stem to it as, as a long petiole uh, leaf attachment and the other one doesn't and one uh, this one the later award has has more of a fuzzy look to it than the other ones flower is very similar it also can be confused easily for uh, for it, it, until you see the leaves because these leaves again don't clasp don't go around there um, with common bones so which often grows near it As a matter of fact I could have sworn I just saw some here before um, I'll have to go look again in just a second, but I believe we have some in this area and that, uh, you know, the comparison might be really good so that you can kind of take a look at that. This can grow to six feet tall, like the other two can as well. And uh, it is, again, as I mentioned, quite, uh, quite favorable for, for a lot of these different kinds of insects to come and visit. It can spread not just by, uh, via, not just via uh, pollination and seeds, which it produces a ton of, but also spreads through its rhizomes so it can form nice little patches all over. As you can see, this has formed a nice little patch. Going to get six feet tall. So can the common bone set. So can the tall bone set. Uh, so there is that. In fact, let me just come over here. I wanted to show you. Um, you know that there's a nice patch growing over here and right next to it here is the common bone set and you'll notice the leaves completely different they wrap around them this is perfoliotum it goes around the stem but otherwise the flowers look very similar as you can tell quite similar to each other a great little plant um, but again can be weedy because it spreads by rhizomes it can really take off but I mean if you're patient and you have the space for it, especially if you're naturalizing in a nice sunny area um, a little bit of moisture perhaps it can take tolerate a tiny bit of shade uh, it is something that just, as you can see, the pollinators are going to love you for it. And it'll spread and become a carefree type of plant if you don't mind the height and so forth. So again, a, uh, a very, very neat little plant. A very common plant that just really stands out this time of year because, again, a lot of the stuff is starting to fade. Uh, this is late thoroughwort or late bone set, uh, late flowering bone set, uh, sometimes called Eupatorium serotinum. What a neat, neat, beautiful native wildflower.